Welcome to another Igloo Imaging Tutorial. This week we're going to do a fidget spinner style 3D logo in Adobe Illustrator CC 2018. It's quite an involved one, so if you're new to Illustrator, it might be a little tricky to follow, but I'll do my best to explain everything along the way. So, in Illustrator, I've just drawn an artboard. It doesn't matter what size it is, because everything's vector-based, so you can make it any size you want, and it'll stay the same quality. So, let's get rid of these guys, and we'll work to the red one. So the first thing you're gonna do is select the ellipse tool and we're going to draw out a circle change it to something a little less offensive there we go then we're going to draw an oval and this is going to make the indent so if you just make it a bit of a different color so you can see where you go now go to the edge of the box and rotate it around if you hit up command y apple y and you'll see the outline and just zooming in here, it can be a bit easier to set this up. There we go. Come on, way again. It doesn't look quite right, so we want it more, more in there. Maybe make this a bit bigger. So when you're happy with what you've got, we want to duplicate this oval. So you want to Command C, Command Shift V, which is paste it in place. Then when you hit R, you're going to move, click the central mark and move it over to the center of the other circle. So just drag it over here until it's a center. Move it tricky sometimes. There we go. Now when you drag it round with R, it'll rotate around that centre point. So Apple C, Apple V. There we go. It's just not playing ball. Let's drag it round. There, Apple C. Sorry, Command C, Command. Shift V, paint, and then R. And then drag it out. So what we're aiming for is the same distance between these, this and this here. This one's a bit bigger than that, that one's a bit smaller, but that's fine. So now if you drag the cursor over everything, you want to go down to where it says Pathfinder, and it's this one here, so it's subtract front from the back and that gives us our fidget spinner shape so now what we want to do is extrude so we go up to effects 3d extrude and bevel now just highlight these hit zero tab zero tab zero then it's perspective and just turn on preview probably want to drag it pretty much to the end and that's about right yeah so hit OK. So now what we want to do is expand it, expand appearance, and I think maybe just to expand again. So if you hit A and select the main bit, okay, just this main bit here, we can change its colour so it's easier for us to see. And then we can Command 2, which locks it. So Command 2 just to lock it. It's Command Alt 2 to unlock it. Okay, we're going to have to lock our background again. So, Command 2 locks it. And then when you press A, select all these over here, because they're actu actually separate blocks at the minute. We want to combine them all. So go back to your Pathfinder and unify the shapes. Same with every bit that's coming off it. So you're just unifying everything. So these are going to become one shape to deal with. 
so we can apply one gradient to all of it. So we jump back. So now select this main figure so you want to Alt Command 2 to unlock it and we've got this gradient here, this radial gradient. I've got them pre-saved in here but it's not that difficult to do if you've used gradients before. The inside is 10% black if you've got your CMYK values open here, 10%. This mid one at around 40% along the line is 30% black and then we've got 100% black on the outside. So, the next thing we're going to do is colour, in fact let's draw the, the circle. So find the centre point, draw the line out and you're trying to intersect these three points. This point here, this point here, this point here. So it just takes a bit of tweaking to get it in the right spot. That looks about right. So now, again, I've got this in color presets, but all it is is white in the middle, 10% uh, cyan, 100% magenta, 50 yellow, and zero on the black. And then on the black, we've got 100, 100, 100 in magenta, yellow, and black. So with V selected, you're going to command shift and the square brackets which pushes it right to the back uh, in fact command and one of the brackets will just drop it backwards and forwards so up down up down there you go so now getting there what we need to do is add some bevel effects and these shadows so let's color in these bits first. So select these. Zoom in a bit more. A very fine piece there. That piece, that piece, that, 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 and that. And we're gonna make it that colour. So that colour is a radial gradient. Starting with these values, cyan 10, magenta 100, and yellow 50. And it goes through to a black, which is a mix. You can pull the black directly off there, which will give you that mix. So it's not in the right spot in the minute. What we want to do is get the light here and the dark on the side. So hit gradient and drag your circle to this point here. You can make your circle a bit bigger and Maybe a bit smaller, and that's about right. So you go around and you do that on all of them. So drag your circle over with the gradient tool. A bit bigger. Can't really tell on these because they're very thin. But just bring them out to the edge anyway. these internal highlights here. Very easy, just draw an oval and I've, again I've got it there. It's a, this time it's a linear gradient, white and white. White at this end is set to 90% opacity and the white at this end is set to zero. So you want to drag your line straight across it. So that's the kind of thing you want. You just need to rotate this and get it the right size to sort of fit nicely in there. Just a little bit too big. There we go. That looks good. Maybe just pull it a little short to get rid of that so it fades straight off. And then Command C, Command V, and we'll pop this guy in here. Try and copy your distances here and here, so it's about right. 
and I'm just holding Alt and dragging it up. So Alt, Shift and drag is same as copy and paste. Just a bit of a shortcut. If you can use the shortcut, do, because it will save you time. It comes second nature after a while, but I have to look at the keys to tell you what I'm pressing it. Just I just normally press them without looking. So, so there we are, we're getting there. Now what we need are these bevels, these inner bevels. So the easiest way to do this is to direct select the shape, Alt, drag. In fact, we're going to copy and paste first, so we need to duplicate it. So, Command C, Command Shift V. So all that's done is pasted the same shape in front. Now, if we're smart, we can do that one, that one, and that one all at the same time. So Command C, Command Shift V. And we've got a copy of all three now, okay? So let's start with this one. Direct select with A, hold Alt, and drag it across there, just about there. Now, A is a direct select, you're gonna select that one and that one, go back to your Pathfinder and subtract from the front. Now, it, it does it well, and it leaves a little sliver here. So you can select that and get rid of it. Now let's put a gradient across like this. So we've put that gradient across and we're going to do the same with the others. Colour dropper is I and you can just click on the other one. Drag it down there, get rid of that little sliver. And this is the last one over here. And subtract from there. Uh, colour drop and drag your gradient across it. So there we're starting to look good. So now what we want to do is add these highlights here. And the best way to do that is direct select the main piece and you want to copy which is command C and then command shift V so we've pasted it in place. You can see it's in place. Then we're going to direct select with A and hold Alt and drag it just up a bit. Okay. I'm going to drag it to there. Press V. I'm going to rotate them slightly. And I'm going to drag it just so it matches up with that top line up here. That looks good. Yep. Yeah. So then we're going to select both. The one that we've copied and pasted in place and the new one that we've moved and subtract from the front. And what that does is gives us these highlight lines around the edge. Now, we want to use Color Dropper, so press I, and we're going to color drop this gradient here. So this is the white to zero. Now what that's done is pretty good. We're going to just tweak these highlights a bit, so direct select, and get it so it looks, looks natural. I want it just to disappear off the edges. That's pretty good. Now what isn't natural is this sharp corner here, so direct select with A and just select that middle one and then press P and wait for the minus to appear and you can get rid of that one. Get rid of that one and then with A drag the, uh, the point out so it just becomes slightly rounded. And there is pretty good. Next thing, this little shadow underneath, very simple, draw an ellipse underneath your shape. You, if you select all your shape and press Command G then that will group it all together. So then we'll select this shape and we want a gradient, this time it needs to be radial and we want black on the inside and then zero on the outside white zero on the outside. Hit gradient, bring the shape down a bit, cross like this. That looks pretty good. And we can move it down. 
Now when you select it, if you press transparency and change it to multiply, that means when you move it down to a darker area, it'll still look okay. If you didn't do that, you'd see a white edge to it. Now if you drop the shadow directly underneath it, then it looks like it's sitting on the deck. Right. If you move the shadow down, it looks like it's floating. So that's what we're after. We'll change that to about 80% just to take some of the sting out of it. There we go, that looks better. Right there. Yeah. Now, we're going to do the reflection, the last bit. So, select your shape and Alt-Drag. Alt-Drag shift down. So, it drags it down, copies it. And you want to reflect it horizontally. So, it flips it. And it's about right spot. I'm going to draw a square over the whole thing and stick a white to black gradient on that square. Down from the top, select both, transparency, make opacity mask. That's good but it's not quite there, we need to punch them out. So these two shapes here, you want to hit the gradient and go to gradient and then move it right up to the white. I go back to transparency and it's important to click back on that shape otherwise you can't click and select anything. I've wasted a lot of time doing that. So click back on the shape and drop its opacity to about 30%. There we go. So I've been the one that was there before, this is our new one. Command G, group it all together. And there we go, it looks nice. Now to change the colours on these is pretty simple. You select them. Alt shift drag, Ooh. Alt shift drag, and then command D to do it again. Just so we've got three. You can select the colours of both and change them to whatever colour you like. So if you want blue, you can change it to blue, and you can select these shapes. I'm just going to do the big shapes, we don't need to do smaller shapes. Change those colours. Again, select the ball, ball. Change it to yellow. Select these big shapes. Remember you got the slivers in there, you can sort those out yourself. And change it to that. And that is how you do shiny spinner 3D logos. You can then add your text and typesetting and whatever you want to do. I hope that's was that was useful for you guys. If you liked this video then subscribe or, or like the video and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,